Well, we've made it. The day has dawned. Uh, we've been waiting for this delivery for a while. And after a couple of days of uh, traveling, we're in the keel area and the boat we're gonna pick up is very easy to see in this marina. It's got an air draft of uh, 31 meters, 102 feet. And I can see a very big white carbon mast. Wow, let's go have a look. So it's day one on our trip down to Cannes. We did all our food shopping yesterday, stowed it all away nicely, and we spent a bit of time getting used to the boat and finding where everything is. We've switched all our uh, instruments on, we've done our safety checks, and uh, we're ready to slip our lines and proceed down to the Kiel Canal. You see a passenger ship going in there and the coaster, and there are about 10 boats, 10 yachts waiting to go in. Some lovely uh, Dutch barges. Looks like a bit of a rally. Well, we're in, and it's always massively exciting getting in with these big vessels. Uh, it's very sweet, nice engine notes. In the sun shining, and we've got blue skies. A little bit of a breeze, very nice. We've stopped on the pontoon and paid our fee, 41 euros, and we've got uh, 56 nautical miles to do. So probably about nine hours now cruising. And there's a commercial vessel in front of me. Very, very pleasing start. So it's easy living on the Kiel Canal. Yep. Starts <laughs> for me to go on. Yeah, this looks lovely. <laughs> Is the whole trip going to be this pleasant? How's lunch or what? Dinner? Mm, very good, I'm saying myself. <laughs> you made it, did you? Well, joint effort. <laughs> There's no rocking and rolling on this job today, is there? No. Very easy cooking conditions. bottle lock now. Uh, done the whole canal today in the glorious sunshine. Very easy conditions but we have to get out before it's dark and we're doing that. We've got this high tide up the Elbe so the water's going to ebb out so we should be speeding down the Elbe soon. Good morning. We're going across the top of the Frisian Islands now. Uh, we got sails out this morning, there was a bit of wind, but we've uh, had to furl the headsail. But you can see the sun behind me. And uh, yeah, it's very nice. There's enough room to do your exercises up here. <laughs> There's enough room to run around the deck as well. But it's a beautiful day. And we're just motoring along at 1700 revs, giving us just over eight knots. We've still got the main up. We got sheeted in, but uh, yeah, nice to be making some good progress with some sunshine.
crazy up here. We've got, uh, let's have a look, 26 knots of apparent wind speed. We've got a reef in the head saw and a reef in the main. And we're trucking along at just over eight knots. Uh, it's the usual North Sea short chop gnarly seas. But let's see where it's down below. Magnus has said the boat is very comfortable and it doesn't jump about. It moves like this. Let's go and have a look. Well, it's very comfortable. Yeah. It's very quiet. Very easy action. Got 50 tons of boat. Yeah, you could make, even make a cup of tea down here. Got a bit of a heel on, but um, yeah, very nice. Yeah, it's a real proper sailing boat. Uh, a nice angler heel, very powerful, but uh, stable. The wind's all gone through now, and we're just motoring along uh, towards the English side, over towards Dover. Uh, across the North Sea and then we're going to get through the channel and head into Roscoff. Uh, we've done a few jobs because it's nice and easy. We've had a clean of the boat, a little tidy up of the lines and watching the traffic. Uh, it's very simple with all of the chart plotters we've got and um, all of the AIS system. And a great view from up here. We've got a big um, car carrier just passing us. I think uh, Susan's uh, prepping tonight's dinner and Julia's looking at the passage around Beachy Head. So, yeah, it's all, all looks good. So this is what we wanted, we've just turned uh, to cross the channel uh, by Brighton, heading for the Channel Islands, heading southwest, we've got 15 knots of wind, northwesterly wind as well. So we got it on the beam and this is what a Halberg Rassi 69 likes, have a look. We've got a full main. Full head saw. Yeah, it's uh, sailing really nicely. Just forward of the beam, the wind is. And we're doing seven and a half, eight knots. Very safe, stable, and strong. Very lovely. seen us and he was aware. Uh, they're always very good. He um, straight back to me as close as the point of approach and uh, said he'd pass across the bow. I wish him a good morning or a lovely day. And he passes by. We've got a few more to watch out for. Uh, they're all coming behind us and we're, we're going down 
across the traffic separation zone, which is actually back here. You can see that there's the phone, so we can come down here and work our way across the channel. So we just left uh, Roscoff and we're heading out uh, around Ushant into the Bay of Biscay. It's 400 miles to Cape Finisterre. I love a Biscay crossing. It's always exciting. The weather looks good. Um, there's another low pressure off southern Iceland that's sweeping a lot of wind around Scotland. But lower down, it sort of pushes uh, into the southwest of England and spreads across into the channel. It's going to give us some northwesterly winds, hopefully. Not today, it's very light, uh, which is quite a nice start. Big swell, actually. This boat's so quick with wind. Um, Hell of a lot quicker than she motors, so we're hoping for wind. The sun's uh, going to set in a couple of hours. Dinner's cooking. Uh, Susan's turn tonight. It's always special when Susan cooks. <laughs> Much better than me, but I do my fair share. <laughs> got two reefs in the headsail and the reef mainsail. We're sailing at, well, speed through the water, 9.3, 9.5, 9.4, and very steady. The sea state's getting up a little bit now, but she carries her weight through the water very well. As with many boats, even new halberd grasses, you have to keep your eye on every little bit and uh, make sure nothing's moving or not working properly or got any failures of bits. And I noticed this morning that one of the battens uh, has come and slipped down the batten track. Just made a temporary repair to that with the trusty old uh, cable ties and a bit of cord. Uh, tied that up. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to damage anything else. And uh, when we get into uh, phone service area, I can speak to Halberd Rassi and uh, ask them the best way to resolve the problem. It looks like it's something we can't resolve at sea, um, but it hasn't actually broken or damaged. I think it's something the battery's just unclipped and slid down its, its track. But it's all safe. Um, but you've got to have your eye on everything as you're going along. And cable ties, carry cable ties. <laughs> out west for a while and then as the weather veered back around towards the northwest we tacked southeast and gradually over the last five hours the wind has gone or well, our bearing our heading has gone from 150 degrees southeast to now 180 degrees so we're headed south in the Bay of Biscay uh, sailing beating into the wind but the wind is due to veer more uh, so we'll eventually on a beam reach and then a broad reach to the finish. And then we've got 200 miles to do. Uh, it gets lumpy out in the Bay of Biscay, but the boat's been handling that very well. Uh, we've been regularly seeing nine knots. We've got the uh, Raymarine steering system on, steering to the wind angle, uh, which makes it very easy. We've got a couple of reefs in the headsail and the ease one out. Uh, looks like we're heading towards blue skies on the right route. The front came through as was forecast, it was a few hours late, but we were heading south uh, gradually 180 degrees, 190 degrees, and then a uh, whole band of rain came through, really heavy rain, and the wind eased off and veered through 60 degrees and has brought us right on track for Cape Finisterre. Uh, very good. Uh, the wind piped up, I had to put some reefs in the sail, but they're so easy with the push buttons, they really are. It uh, makes it um, 
you don't worry if the wind gets up. You can bear away, fill the headsail very quickly and easily. I did it single-handed with the auto helm, uh, reefed the main, and uh, got her back on track quite easily. No stress. And we are just on a beam reach with uh, 20 knots true, and we're doing 10 knots through the water. Uh, it's just superbly fast boat, very stable, and uh, yeah, lovely. So we're bang on track, uh, 160 miles, I think, to Cape Finisterre. What a fantastic crossing. We spent all day today doing 10 knots for the beam reach. The wind this evening is just easing down to uh, 12s, 13s. We're still making nearly seven knots. The sails are just uh, losing a bit of the wind in the swell that's picked up, but wow, what a fantastic boat. She's absolutely so smooth and beautiful to sail on. That was a uh, one of the best crossings I've ever had of the Bay of Biscay, and we had plenty of wind. It's just so quick and so lovely. Uh, we've been able to live easily on the boat. It's very nice. I've read from the Orcanus app recently that the orcas have migrated north around Glacier area, and there's been a couple of spite sightings of Figaro de Foz and down well, Lisbon, then Figaro de Foz, and they were expecting them up in the glacier area yesterday, day before, and there was a site in there. And I am very certain we have seen the pod. Uh, they were about four miles away inshore, very fast blows, um, not hugely tall blows, but forward facing blows, very bushy, very powerful blows, and they're about six to eight animals. Um, very quick moving uh, when I originally spotted them. They were a couple of miles. Um, south and they very quickly moved north and they're in the area. Sailing yacht Lily, sailing yacht Lily. Location of interaction 41 degrees 07 decimal 41 north, 08 degrees 55 decimal 75 minutes west. Over. We seem to be in that uh, same vicinity. I'll plot on the chart and have a look. Right, okay, we're just cruising down the coast of Portugal and we just heard on the VHF radio that uh, there's been an orca interaction just ahead of us, 15 miles south of where we are. The skipper of the vessel uh, gave the exact lap long. I've plotted it on the chart and they're 15 minutes, uh, 15 miles south. Uh, they've, been, they've had a bit of rudder damage, but they're all okay, so we're going to take some avoidant action hopefully, and change our longitude by getting in towards uh, Porto and getting in towards the coast. Um, I've woken up the other rest of the crew. We're going to double up the watch and keep our eyes peeled uh, and keep in touch with the other, other boat. But he did say they're heading north, so perhaps our way. So just changing course now. Well, happy to wake up this morning in Porto. We arrived uh, late last night in the dark. It's a beautiful entrance to come into in the light, but tricky at night. 
uh, but it's well buoyed, pretty shallow, uh, we had enough depth and it's a, a big pontoon to land on which is always useful at night. I had a little bit of a scare with the orcas um, when we were about 12 miles offshore, another boat announced on the VHF that had, they'd had an interaction with orcas. Um, we got hold of them and they had a little bit of damage to a rudder. It was actually another um, boat on a Halcyon yacht delivery, so I knew of the skipper, we had a chat, and we instantly made the decision to uh, motor inshore, increase, increase the revs, uh, double the watch, got all the crew up, <laughs> and uh, we kept a very vigilant watch and motored inshore pretty quickly, and then came the last bit close in down the coast and got into uh, Porto here, so yeah, it's good. And, uh, we can have a bit of a rest and get some food. Uh, we don't need any fuel because we're heading to Jib. We've got plenty of uh, plenty of fuel heading to Jib and uh, just get some food and have a little bit of a rest, really. And the water, yeah, nice. And then we can get going again. Mm -hmm.